Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We hear so much about how Tesla are battery constrained. Then they invented the 46A3 battery cell form and are starting new factories to produce it. Except now we hear they're nickel constrained and trying to secure more supply or even mine the nickel themselves. But what if Tesla can circumvent nickel for the majority of their vehicles sold? On battery day, we were overwhelmed with information. It was hard to take it all in. But in case you didn't realize, there'll be three types of cathodes used in the 4680 batteries, iron being one of them. They're called LFP batteries, also known as lithium iron phosphate batteries, hence the acronym, because the chemical symbol for iron is FE. I think there is too much distraction with nickel that people are missing how underrated LFP batteries are. Tesla downplay them and talk about how important it is to secure the nickel supply, but perhaps this is just a distraction. Perhaps this is Elon playing game theory with his so-called competition. I think LFP batteries are going to be big for Tesla's future. We hear so much about nickel or nickel and manganese batteries in the 4680 form because they're so essential for a family car to do 0 to 60 in less time than a $3.5 million Bugatti or for us to all drive around in bulletproof Cybertrucks. But nickel is expensive and scarce. Tesla have been coy about the LFP 4680 battery. Why? Well, in my opinion, a lot of what Tesla and Elon do is revolved around sandbagging the company, keeping things quiet as to not let the world know just how fast they might change the system, and they can do it quick enough before the system has time to stop them. The centralization of energy and fuel being decentralized and giving control to the people instead of the oligarchies. But yes, an LFP 4680 battery is coming. So why do we need nickel cathodes at all, if we can just use iron? Well, the LFP batteries are less energy dense. LFP ranging from around 90 to 160 watts per kg. Nickel ranging between 100 and 265 watts per kg. And as we know how important it is to save weight in an electric vehicle, this is why nickel has been the preferred cathode, or nickel and manganese combination. But aside from that, LFP is actually safer. They're less prone to catching fire due to being more stable. LFP batteries can have a higher life cycle too, before battery degradation starts, supposedly up to 10,000 cycles. If you get 200 miles per cycle, and that's 2 million miles. The batteries are significantly cheaper compared to nickel, due to there being no shortage of iron or lithium. They also do not require cobalt, like some nickel cathodes. Even before the 4680 battery form, we had LFP below $100 per kilowatt hour. So this is the trade-off between cost versus energy density. However, LFP are also notorious in the cold weather. They don't get nearly as much range. But Tesla managed to rectify this issue by heating the batteries to 60 degrees Celsius and keeping them warm meant they were able to maintain vehicle range. Thus Tesla was able to use them in their Made in China Model 3 standard range, and in February, also started using them in their Fremont Model 3 standard range too. Now, I believe the LFP chemistry was working in the Model 3 standard range before they even added the new heat pump or even the octa valve. Not only that, but they're not using the 4680 batteries, nor cell to vehicle integration, or gigapress die casting, all of which save weight and increase range and performance. So my point is that if LFP worked for standard range before, then with all these advances, then surely there's a chance that it's suitable for the long range version too. Not only the long range Model 3, but maybe even the long range Model Y, or at least a short range Model Y. We're hearing that the 4680 batteries with cell to vehicle structure may save about 300 kilograms of weight. That's huge. It just actually may be enough for a Model Y long range. It's likely the performance versions will still require nickel based cathodes. If this is the case, then the majority of vehicles sold will be able to run on LFP, which is not only a huge cost saving, but also a large removal of battery constraint. We continually hear about how Tesla are battery constrained, mainly because there was not a feasible battery that could effectively be ramped up until we had the 4680, and the other issue being the scarcity of nickel. Well, now it would appear the 4680 production lines are more or less sorted, and likely to still improve over time. But if nickel isn't a concern, then it's easy enough to get iron and lithium. What will happen to this company when it finally has the battery supply it's been longing for, not to mention two enormous factories that can actually cater to the abundant supply of batteries? It would appear that the belief is the new structure and batteries should reduce the car's 
weight by about 300 kilograms. If we remove 300 kilograms, and if we use Tesla's current battery size of 82 kilowatt hours for the long range models. As far as I could tell, the CATL LFP batteries Tesla currently use in their standard range version are 125 watts per kg, and the Panasonic 2170 cells are 246 watts per kg. Now this is at the cell level. With 82 kilowatt hours, then they come in at a total weight of 656 kilograms for the LFP and 333 kilograms for 2170. Although the current cars are using 82 kilowatt hours for long range, but perhaps they require less battery with the weight saving. But that's a difference of 323 kilograms, which is pretty close to the 300 kilograms that we were saving with the new battery system and structure. The other way to look at it is that on battery day, Tesla claimed that all their new advances would increase range by 54%. Well, that's even easier. If we add 54% range onto the current standard range Model 3, we go from a range of 263 miles to 394 miles. Given that the current range for the long range Model 3 is 353 miles, then that is well above what is required for the long range. However, I think all these range improvements were from the 2170 batteries comparing the 4680 full nickel batteries, used to demonstrate that Tesla was able to produce a battery that had enough power density for a practical electrical semi-truck with a decent enough range but the LFP batteries would only need a 34% range increase to meet today's long range models. So perhaps they are able to achieve that much of an increase. In either of these scenarios, even if Tesla are that close, then they could likely just add a few extra batteries into the car possibly. If any of you know anything extra about how LFP batteries might work in the cell to vehicle structure as a 4680, please comment below. You're a great community. I seem to attract some of the smartest Tesla investors. So it'd be good to pool our knowledge and try and work out what this company can become. I read all your comments and try to reply to as many as possible too. This would mean that nickel-based cathode batteries can be kept for Model S, X, Semi, Cybertruck and performance models, and possibly the van. Although probably not, as it will have plenty of room to store batteries, not need any major performance, and probably not that much range, and likely best to keep the cost as low as possible. So now I think about it, the van might also be viable for LFP too. At the end of the day, even if the LFP batteries aren't used for long range models, then they'll certainly be used for the Model 2. It sounds like LFP will have a longer battery life, as in possibly 2 million mile life, whilst the nickel based batteries, not needing to be charged as frequently due to longer ranges, still have faster degradation. Of course, the Model 2, being that much smaller and lighter, will have significant weight savings too. Tesla's 4680 LFP battery is all about the Model 2 for robotaxis. They may only need a 40 to 45 kilowatt hour battery and still be able to get sufficient range. There will likely also be a long range version too, which would still more than likely use LFP as well. They could even do a performance version, but this probably would need nickel based cathode. We've heard LG is likely to start making 4680 batteries for Tesla in a custom factory, either in Europe or the US. But LG currently supply 2170s for the Chinese models, which are nickel, manganese and cobalt. So we might infer that they'll also continue with nickel based cathodes for their 4680s without the cobalt, of course. But as far as I can tell, CATL has not mentioned anything about supplying Tesla with 4680 batteries. If they did, there'd be a high possibility that they might be with iron cathodes, as the current batteries CATL supply Tesla are LFP. CATL could scale up huge and supply Tesla with a ton of 4680 LFP batteries, likely far more than Tesla would need in their vehicles particularly when the vehicles themselves will have their own battery factories next to the actual vehicle factories and self-supply in-house. Therefore, if CATL had 4680 LFP batteries, their sole purpose might be for energy battery storage. Not for power walls though, as they'd be too heavy with LFP batteries and not able to be secured onto people's walls, which is one of the main advantages power walls offer. So they'd be used for mega packs and wow, Presumably the South Australia battery Tesla did was with a nickel based cathode and possibly 2170 or 18650 cell form. In other words, an LFP 4680 battery would quite possibly cost one third as much at the cell level. Can you imagine the profit margins Tesla could make on energy storage, particularly as this Australian facility paid for itself within just a few years? Wow, what a return, what a resource. Energy could be huge. Well, there's no could about it really. As many of you all know and often tell me in the comments. 
So with energy and probably the ability to potentially satisfy in the region of 90% of all Tesla vehicle sales, this is why I think LFP is where the real value is for Tesla. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.